Welcome everyone to the Evacuation Route Planning and Development Award Workshop. I'm Dave Farley, I'm joined by Becky DeForest, and we're gonna walk you through all of the fine points of managing your evacuation grant. But before we get started, let's take an overview of the grant and how we got here. And just as an FYI, a recording of this workshop will be available on our workshop, on our website, excuse me, after, after we're done. So this program is funded by a grant from CAL FIRE, the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, as part of the California Climate Investment Program through the California Fire Safe Council. And with this grant, we were able to award $3.3 million in grants to 11 counties to support evacuation route identification, planning, fuels reduction, and maintenance and signage for use during emergencies. The funding can also be used for public education activities that increase community awareness of evacuation planning and preparation. These funds are for activities between September 1st, 2022 and February 29th, 2024. Now listed here, <clears throat> excuse me, listed here are the California Fire Safe Council Grant Clearinghouse team. These contacts can be found on page five of your program handbook. We are here to assist you throughout the lifespan of the grant. If you have any questions about rolling out your program, implementation, um, any modifications you need to make, feel free to reach out to myself or Becky anytime during the grant. <clears throat> And on this slide is uh, the contact information for our programs and outreach team. Our regional coordinators work with counties and fire safe councils throughout the state to assist with bringing regionally applicable education, resources, networking opportunities to our fire mitigation partners. And our communications team helps tell the story of the work being done throughout the state. They are great contacts for promoting events, sharing success, success stories, and a lot more. So now I'd like to turn it over to Becky to kind of lead you through the rest of the way. Um, I will be kind of monitoring chat and responding to questions throughout the presentation. Uh, there will be an opportunity at the end for Q&A um, at the end. So, I guess with that, uh, Becky, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dave, and welcome everyone. The CAL FIRE Evacuation Grant Handbook is a detailed extension of your sub-award agreement. All grantees were emailed a copy of the award handbook, and it can be found on the Evacuation Grant Announcement page of the CFSC website. The focus of today's workshop is to provide you an overview of the information in your handbook and highlight additional resources provided by the California Fire Safe Council. Our agenda today includes coverage of evacuation grant project implementation, grant management, monitoring and resources for success, and then we'll open it up for question and answer. Starting out with your project implementation, we'll be discussing the roles and responsibilities that you assume as a subgrantee, a little bit about your subaward agreement, and we'll finish with some important reminders for successful project implementation. In a subaward agreement, the subrecipient, which is you, carries out the subgrant project with funding from a pass-through entity, in this case, California Fire Safe Council. As the subrecipient, your responsibilities include completing your project as described in your grant application, spending grant funds correctly, knowing and complying with the terms of your subaward agreement, the CAL FIRE procedural guide, and your local policies and procedures, documenting all expenses and matching contributions, including funding, funding acknowledgements on communications and outreach materials, reporting accomplishments accurately, completely, and on time, and taking photo documentation throughout the grant term. The subaward agreement 
is an official binding contract, and it can be easily located in your documents tab in Zoom Crans once it's been fully executed. The subaward agreement includes your legal responsibilities as well as your grant number, which is also a way to identify your project in Zoom Grants. It includes your funding amount and important reporting information and deadlines. Again, it is considered fully executed upon signature and approval by an authorized representative of the California Fire Safe Council. For any projects embarking on activities that will have an environmental impact, such as some fuels reduction projects, documentation of CEQA or NEPA compliance is required prior to commencing any ground disturbing work. The documentation must be dated within 12 months of grant execution and should be submitted to your CFSC grant specialist. If you're doing ground disturbing or fuels work that is exempt from CEQA, please provide documentation of your categorical exemption to your grant specialist. It's important to note that failure to comply with the award provisions and grant requirements may result in termination of your subaward. Reasons for termination may include, but are not limited to, misuse of funds, lack of capacity, falsification of data, non-performance, misrepresentation, non-adherence to grant terms, or fraud. Some final thoughts as we wrap up the implementation section of today's workshop is to contact your grant specialist if you have any questions whatsoever about your subaward agreement, allowable and disallowable costs or activities, with budget or scope of work modifications, or if you foresee any changes that will impact your project activities. Send us written notice of problems, delays, or adverse conditions impacting your ability to meet your grant objectives and include a statement of the action taken or the action contemplated. Now let's talk about grant management, where we'll cover the expectations and processes for data collection, reporting, reimbursements and source documentation, grant modifications, public statements and funding acknowledgements, and the closeout process. We'll start with your key progress, progress reporting deadlines. These are included in the chart shown, as well as in your subaward agreement and on page 13 of your award handbook. These are provided to help you stay on track with your progress reports and failure to comply with the reporting deadlines should be considered non-compliance. Therefore, any delay in subsequent reimbursement requests or worst case scenario resulting in termination of your subaward agreement. Please contact your grant specialist if you foresee or experience delays in submitting your progress reports. The progress report will include three main components. First, it's where you'll provide a record of the tasks and activities that were accomplished during the reporting period as they relate to your work plan. It is also where you'll have the opportunity to provide narrative and context around your successes, challenges, and outcomes. Second, there is a section on data collection metrics and deliverables, as these are the measurable results of your efforts, such as miles treated, signs erected, new systems launched, and any evacuation standards adopted, audiences reached, et cetera. Lastly, you'll be reporting out on your budget progress for the reporting period. For those who have not submitted progress reports previously in Zoom grants, here's a screenshot of what the portal will look like. From the tabs in the upper left of the screen, once you select the progress report tab, you'll see separate tabs for each reporting period throughout the grant. As you can see, after selecting the reporting period, the first question starts with the narrative section of your work plan, progress. Once you've completed the narrative, you'll see fields for recording measurable results. Of importance to note is that not every project is going to have data to report in every one of these fields. Complete the fields that apply to your program and the fields where you had deliverables during the reporting period. Changing gears a little, now we're going to cover some key information about the reimbursement process. The evacuation planning and development grant payments for work are conducted on a reimbursement basis only. Payments are made through ACH processing to the subrecipient's bank account. In the rare case that your county does not accept ACH payments, please contact your grant specialist right away to discuss alternative options. 
Here's a checklist of things you'll want to make sure are completed before you start the reimbursement request process. Ensure that your insurance documents are up to date and uploaded in Zoom grants under the Documents tab. Also ensure that you've completed the ACH and W-9 forms. Blank forms can be found in your Zoom grants account under the Documents tab as well. Also ensure that you've completed any progress reports for previous quarters and collect and advance your proof of expenditures for the invoicing period. In the following slides, we'll show you some screenshots on how your Zoom Grants portal will look. But first, here's a quick overview of the submission process. In your Zoom Grants account, you'll click on the reimbursement tab, select the button for create new reimbursement request, complete the fields in the form, upload your source documentation, and then click Submit. As you can see here, the Reimbursements tab is up in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Create New Reimbursement Request is just below that. And then once you click on that Create New Reimbursement Request button, it will take you to a series of fields that look like this. As a reminder, your Reimbursement request number will be your grant number dash the number of reimbursement request. For example, if your grant number is 321123 and this is the first re reimbursement request that you are submitting, your reimbursement request number will be 321123-1. As we've mentioned, source documentation for your expenditures is required to, to accompany your reimbursement request. Now, Dave is going to walk you through the source documentation process. Right, so as Becky was mentioning, with each reimbursement request, we want, what we're looking for is a reconciliation of how the funds were spent. And we do that through, you know, transaction ledgers, whether it's a general ledger or, or something similar to that. What we don't want you to do is reinvent the wheel because we're confident that in your accounting system, you have the information we're looking for. And when you submit your reimbursement request, there is a, a template or a guide of the information that we're looking for. And it may, it may not look exactly like how your accounting system provides, um, provides the line item detail that we need, but Essentially, what we're looking for is if you spent, say, for example, $25,000 in a particular quarter, we just want to see detailed out how that $25,000 was spent, a simple reconciliation. So take a look at the at the template, at the guide that we provide uh, in the reimbursement, uh, reimbursement request tab. And I'm sure that Again, I'm sure that your accounting system has that information. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or send me an email and I'll, I'll be able to walk you through it. But again, we do not want you to reinvent the wheel. You do not need to take our example um, as gospel, uh, if you will, and you know recreate what you already have to fit into, fit into our template. Um, again, we want to make this as simple as possible for you. So that's... That's about it in a, in a nutshell. Thank you, Dave. So we'll talk a little bit about modifications. And we realize that some level of change and adaptation may occur as you roll out your programs. So the most common modification requests that we see are either requests for programmatic changes, budget revisions, or requests for an extension of the subgrant term. The important thing to know about any type of modification is that prior written approval from your grant specialist is required before making any changes to the project or subaward. And as stipulated in your subaward agreement, any increase or decrease of an expense category of more than 10% of the total grant amount must be approved in writing by CFSC before any change is made. So regarding um, public notice, and funding acknowledgements. Your public facing materials and projects must include funding acknowledgements and funder logos. These are both available by contract, contacting your grant specialist. Any publication with logos needs to be approved 
and guidance on the California Climate Investments logo usage, signage guideline, guidelines, and high resolution files are contained in a style guide available at the website provided. For your ease of access, most of you should have also received these items mentioned um, in our email to you confirming receipt and execution of your subaward agreement. And here's an example of the CAL FIRE funding acknowledgement language in its most basic form. Now for the closeout process. Closeout begins when all project work and quarterly reporting requirements are complete. The closeout deadline for this program is March 31st of 2024. Your closeout report should include final closeout report narrative, final budget reports on actual costs, one digital version of products, publications, flyers, communications, et cetera, any materials that were developed using grant funds over the entirety of the project. It should include a final success story of your project, high resolution digital photos showing the project's outcomes and events, and any GIS networking portal project data files, which may include project maps, evacuation routes identified, treated, and maintained through this grant, and other items to be determined. Here are some helpful um, reminders to keep your grant management on track. Make sure that you're familiar with your subaward agreement and original application. Begin tracking your expenses. And again, as a reminder, this program period runs from September 1st of 2022 to February 29th of 2024. Prepare in advance to submit your reimbursement requests. Ensure that all the contributors to your progress reports know the deadlines. Be familiar with your reporting metrics. Submit your reports on time each quarter. Communicate questions or challenges to your grant specialists. And remember to create success stories and before and after photos. Now as your grant specialist, Dave and I are here as resources and we'll be using a few important tools to assist in monitoring your grants. Two key monitoring strategies are site visits and desk reviews. Site visits are used to monitor your program programmatic progress. This may include touring project areas in person with your grant team and reviewing program documentation. You as the subgrantee will always know in advance if and when a site visit is approaching. Desk reviews are completed to ensure that subgrantees are meeting the standards for management of grant funds. Subgrantees should be able to readily produce expense documentation upon request. Oops. Lastly, between our people, our website tools, and other networking and training opportunities, we have several resources available to help your projects succeed. Dave and I will be hosting quarterly virtual roundtables open to all evacuation grantees. These are scheduled to be held prior to each of your quarterly reporting due dates in an effort to combine networking and learning opportunities with a time to also ask us for any critical reporting questions you might have. The first round table is scheduled for January 18th at 10 a.m. Additional dates are included on page six of your award handbook. In addition to your grants team, CFSC has regional coordinators designated by region to provide additional support to your projects. Depending on the region in which your county is located, either Brooke McAllister or Brittany Munoz will be your CFSC regional coordinator. Brooke is the regional coordinator for the central region, and she hosts a monthly regional meeting with subgrantees, fire safe councils, and RCDs on the first Wednesday of each month at 2 p.m. For information, you can call or email Brooke at her contact information listed on this slide. Brittany is the Southern California Regional Coordinator, and her monthly meeting is the second Wednesday of the month at 12 p.m. Currently, our Northern Regional Coordinator position is vacant, so if your county is in the Northern Region, you can reach out to either Brooke or Brittany to get connected to the Regional Coordinator Services. We also have the CFSC Virtual Learning Center on our website that serves as a one-stop for helpful fire mitigation resources. The CFSC team ensures that the Virtual Learning Center includes a variety of resources to foster community awareness, preparedness, and resiliency. 
Our communications team is always hard at work ensuring that our website is interactive and effective. The events calendar is a great place to find out what we have going on at CFSC, what other wildfire mitigation groups have underway, and to find out about educational opportunities. You can even submit your events via the website to be included in our calendar. Lastly, the communications team puts out a quarterly newspaper newsletter excuse me, called The Mitigation Messenger. This is where you'll find success stories, tips, articles, and insights to inspire your work. Through your own success stories submitted in your grant reports, you may even have the opportunity to have your program featured. You can sign up for the Mitigation Messenger by scrolling to the bottom of our homepage and entering your email in the newsletter sign up field. With that, we'll open it up to question and answer. Dave, did we have anything coming in through the chat? Right, right. So we had a few questions, and I'll just kind of go through them quickly here. And so the first one, if we have a page on our website about the grant, do we need to have the funding acknowledgement on that page? And the simple answer to that question is yes. The next question is, can equipment be purchased with this grant? Uh, yes, it can, but the equipment needs to be connected to fuels work on evacuation route clearance and maintenance projects. So for example, chippers or trailers to haul a chipper would be, would be allowable. Now, here, but here's the thing. And so a few counties receiving this grant um, doing fuels work, already have their equipment purchases approved. Uh, all the other counties interested in purchasing equipment will need prior written approval from your grant specialist before modifying your budget and your scope of work and making a purchase. So while, while equipment is technically allowable, if you don't already have it in your budget and in your project, you'll need to get approval before making that type of change. And the, the final question we had is, can food be purchased for community community outreach and education events? Now, while, while food that isn't associated with a per diem uh, is generally not allowed without prior approval, uh, if you want to provide light refreshments and beverages at a, at a community event to discuss evacuation planning, just send your grant specialist a budget modification request and we'll take it from there. So the, the key is that if you if you want to purchase food, you know, even though it's not technically allowable in most circumstances, uh, if it's not already in your budget, what you'll need is a budget modification to to provide that. And what we're thinking of is light refreshments don't, you know, don't go overboard and provide you know full meals with steak and lobster and whatnot, but just you know, light refreshments that at a community event would be would be acceptable. Just reach out to your grant specialist, make that modification, and uh, we'll make it happen. And that's that's all the questions we had. Thank you, Dave. And we look forward to working with all the subgrantees on this project. Dave can be reached at dfarley at cafiresafecouncil.org. And I can be reached at bdeforest at cafiresafecouncil.org.